Sheepak, seen him yet? Not yet. We can go in without it. <laughs> but he had two copies. <laughs> That's not so what? What is it? Uh, <laughs> is it there? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a, this uh, right up here, where he says he was here on time when he actually was not. I see. I was. They started minutes. No, the, the, the meeting took minutes early. Well, we can blame it on the courthouse clock. Which one are you going to approve? I need to know. The real one or the fake one? I'm going to approve the accurate one. <laughs> Just the one in your hand. You were late. No, I was not late. I move that we approve the second. I second that. <coughs> There's All right, two it's been moved and seconded. I don't know how we do it. Carl said it's designated. The second one I looked at. Yeah, I like the second one. <coughs> the accurate one. And the second. I thought you okay, were late too, but I left you at 8 30. You walked in there. I was this is the one you want to sign. I didn't look at my watch first time. I will put behind this on your side. All right, so and I this is one that is saying we didn't yeah. need August 7th. We did not need no. August 7th. I need we need to need to print those two? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just add that to his motion. Yeah, I even add that to my okay. motion to yeah. approve okay. both of those. Do you know? And second. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. So there's two of these signs. And make sure it's the right one. And it's not the right one. That's 
why we had to do the stocking. <laughs> <laughs> What's the special squeeze for lunch? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. Well, not, Call down there to love the top and they'll tell you. I'm not in the menu plan. <laughs> 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 Andrew Esther asks, <laughs> is this, you want to keep this or you want to keep it? No, no. Okay. And the rest of the stuff, we want to keep it, just FYI. Now she's embarrassed. She is. I can tell you were staying up with you last year. Yeah. Personnel for 10 minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Whoop, we kicked it over. Okay. You do it. You can sit there. I'm going to switch you over here. Before I lead into the truck, uh, Nick was at the, um, the, uh, the shortstop the other day and overheard some conversation about um, Mr. Wilson. Getting another bill, and so I, I looked into that, and what I discovered is that uh, I sent that to the treasurer's office, and I even told her. And uh, the only problem is she don't send the bill. This is his bill, and so I thought I had it taken care of. And, and, and it's also my understanding that he didn't get the letter. I don't know what the problem, whether our address is wrong or. On a burn permit, or if we wrote it down wrong, or what? Well, if you get your statements at the same address, don't you think you got this letter if it was sent? I would have sure thought so. I mean, I, I, I have no idea. Nick was the one who sent the letter out. Uh, uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know what, what we did with the letter, but how we dropped the ball there. But, uh, but we we contacted Mr. Wilson and apologized and told him you know, that uh, we didn't. Uh, we, you know, the, the actual effect of this commission meeting is that we, uh, uh, we certainly didn't uh, mean to send it to the bill. I think that suffice after we instructed you to send the bill. Pardon? You think that's okay what you did even after we as commissioners told you specifically to send him this letter? Well, I, I thought I'd done, I thought I'd done that. Did and, you do uh, it? I, I, I it shouldn't have went to the treasurer's office. It shouldn't have went to anybody else but to no, you. I, I understand that. I, I, I thought the, the bill was, was issued to the treasurer's office, so I let Lisa know that uh, that we weren't going to send the bill. And she probably looked at me like I was silly because why are you telling me? But she didn't say anything. So I just so I assumed it. This son sent out of your office, Lisa? No, it's not. I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought I thought that particular building got issued through the through the uh, treasurer's office, but Misty does that. We, we only send a few of those bills. We, our our idea, even in that process, was was not to really we we don't really want to issue any of those things. We we just want folks to to take a little bit more you know uh, caution with with burdens. We we were you know we were faced with thirty two fire responses in 33 days at one point and that's that's why we took we actually uh, launched into this into this new thing I mean we 
So did the treasurer's office send bills at that point too? No, we, we didn't do any billing. We, we never sent anything. We didn't even have that, that policy before. We didn't send nothing. And we can certainly go back to that if, if it's your choice. But I, but I my choice is for you to do, do it out of your office like you're supposed to do. I, I didn't realize that, that that bill went through our office. I, I didn't send him a bill on purpose. I mean, I, I certainly didn't send him a bill. I, I don't want to send him a bill on purpose. I, I, I think that excuse is pretty weak. You know where the bills are sent from. No, I know. I wouldn't lie to you. I, I thought, I, I, I purposely highlighted that I sent it to the Lisa. I wouldn't lie to you, Shane. I, I, didn't, send, I didn't send a bill. I didn't send a bill on purpose to, to Doyle. I didn't send a bill on purpose to him. Not on purpose, but Misty sent it, right? Yeah, she sent it. Well, when I was when we were sitting in the office, uh, and, and Nick kind of let me know that, that he got a bill, I said, "Well, why did he get a bill?" And Misty is sitting there, and she said, "Well, well, I think I sent it." And I said, "You sent it," and um, and that's that's. Why well, wouldn't he get a bill? Because it had to, you guys had decided to start charging for. No, what, what what happened, Lisa, is is the commissioners. We 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 re looked at it and we decided to rescind the bill because of the complexity of uh, of the fire. It, his is it is not a black and white thing. I mean, it, it is difficult to to launch into even this because because it's not a black and white thing. You know, when whether somebody uh, took enough precaution and and even like Doyle, Doyle has has extremely difficult land to start with. You know, it, it's not like your typical. It's it's rolling and, and it's it's tough. I mean, I, I, I it's kind of like Jeff Scott when he was doing burning. His we got called out to his pretty often, but when he was burning, he was burning really difficult burns. Uh, but I don't know what the answer. There, there is no good answer as far as what you do with with these burns. Uh, it, it's not a popular thing. The to problem do. is you not understanding if you're sending bills or not sending bills. That's the problem. Well, so we're not going to get off that subject, Steve, until we're clear on it. No, I understand that. I understand. No, I, you I should, don't understand that. No, I do. I do understand no, that. You I, don't. I, no, I really do. I, I understand so that. So how come every time I ask you a question about this bill, you start telling us how hard it is to find a fire on his land? I don't care about how hard it is to I find a fire that. there. I, I understand that. The, you know, I, you know, as far as the burns, we, we won't even talk about the burns. You know, the burn plant. But I, I should have known where the bill went from. I should have been. I should have known where the bill was launched from. There ain't no. There's no disputing that whatsoever. I should have known that it didn't go through the treasurer's office. That that Misty issued the bill. I should have known that. I didn't know that. Are you talking recently, or when did you no, it, this it, bill's been sent since 2011. Right. May, it was sent out in May of 2011. Right. This letter was supposed to be sent out in June. This statement got sent out July 17th. Of last year? Of this year. No, this year. Oh. This well, letter that, uh, should have been right. sent out in June, telling him that we're rescinding the charges, as we instructed Steve to do. You rescinded the charges? Which he did not do. Here. Yes, you might not have been here. Because I specifically remember Steve getting authority from the commissioners to send that bill. Initially, so way back in the initial. What way back in the initial? Yeah. Not this group. Right. Okay, I'm just being honest. When we initially looked at it, but this, but this, this has been a long time back. Certainly look at uh, and and, and I'll, well, I'll just let call that. I, that's going to say even the burn thing in general because it, it causes a lot of and I know it puts you guys in, in a tough spot. It puts me in a tough spot. I you know I didn't I don't even really want to do that if we didn't have to. But the firefighters were just about exhausted at that point uh, when when we went into this. Um, I, I don't think it's fair that you're writing off some of the bills 
And then what about the people you did bill and you're, they paid? Now that's not fair. Well, we, we looked at this, the reason I looked at it is because it is a complex, his land is, is much more complex than, than just flat land. It, it is, it is more complex. And that's why we looked at it, that's why we, we, we made a change. Uh, just to bring you up to date on, on, we had an intersection accident out here again, out here at the highways. Uh, I don't know if there's anything different they can do out there. But I did want to bring some attention just to the responders that did an incredible job. Uh, the, the lady was critically injured, and in 12 minutes we had her out of, extricated, had IVs going, and we had her life lighted out. And that's the second one in short time that we've had there that uh, you won't see any EMS service that could have done a better job, and, and fire. Which is great. Did she make it? Incredible response. She's still alive at this point. Yeah. And so, um, a very good job all, all the way around. And, and even at the hospital, getting, getting her out to, you know, getting life light and getting her life lighted out and everything. Because she had some pretty serious injuries. Um, emergency management meeting, uh, especially I put this in the notes because the state requires to see that we indeed did do that. Um, but we met with, with a consultant that's looking over our EOP plan as a, as a tri county. Uh, grant claim, and they went through all the different. Uh, there's like 15 different areas of of, uh, of our plan that they look at. Uh, they met uh, Phil was there, uh, Glenn Newdigger was there, uh, various others couldn't make it. Um, Nick was there, Misty was there, uh, but um, they they have some uh, additional information that we have to gather, and uh, we'll get that back to them as soon as possible. And, we're on kind of a short timeline, and they'll get that uh, back to and, and get it out before the end of the year. Uh, the engine, the engine that we have out here, the one engine that, that we'd like to dispose of to uh, the city of Stafford, it's it's had a leaking tank. We had uh, we had talked to Wise over in Salina. It seems like the, the little that we've used them have been extremely expensive, and uh, they had estimated six thousand dollars to fix that tank. And I, with, with with our decision to go, we've just been putting water in the truck, and it leaks out. We put a little bit more water in the truck, so we kind of figure out what we're going to do. Uh, the city's having all ratified the agreement, but it looks like it's it's going to be fine. Um, we're waiting on Maxville, and then St. John is is just having their legal. Uh, person looked at us over. Uh, but um, in the meantime, we went ahead and, and talked to um, Hayes Fire, and, uh, and they, they sent a person up to look at and the next day. And um, they gave us a, a quote for uh, anywhere from 900 to $1,800 up the top. Uh, to, uh, to remove and replace the packing in that tank and fix that tank leak. And there's, there's the estimate on that. I, I think regardless of, uh, uh, you know, whether we, uh, whether that truck passes over to the city of Stafford, if we sell it outright, it, it has to be fixed. Uh, and, you know, whether with the agreement, if we do pass that truck over to Stafford, whether we would ask for uh, payment in some sense to, to recoup some of this, I, I think that uh, would be up to you guys. If, but, but I do believe we're going to get it fixed, if that's something you guys would agree to. Do we give you a figure, actual figure, I mean, you know, 6 to 12 is quite a range. It, it is. No, I'm not, it depends on. <laughs> There's like two different areas that they had to that they had to because it's a two-stage pump, and so that's I think that's the reason why. It's, if, if they got to do both, then, it's, I, then it's the addition. I believe talking to one other gentleman that the difference in the packing and the labor is whether or not they can properly get it put in without dropping everything. So if they have to drop the PTO, then that's where the extra comes in. So basically, they're telling you they're not going to set you. 
couldn't tell you exactly until they get into it. Right. And even Weiss couldn't. They they quoted us at three thousand initially. Mm -hmm. And they came back and said, "I said, I know, we're not going that route." So the most at the eighteen hundred bucks. Yes. And I don't remember. You guys can remember back when we had to do some different pump work. Mm -hmm. We had big problems. I don't Why? Like Weiss. Why? I don't. I don't think they're competent. After. After the mess that they made of those, we were able. Pumps. To, we were just lucky because you remember that in color it had some writing on it, and I got with the Hale manufacturer, but I don't know if it was Hale or if it was White, one of the two. But we were actually we actually got uh, reimbursed. There. Are we got a new pump. We got a brand new pump. Got a brand new pump from yes. Hale, not White. I just I don't feel that White can, especially. I mean, if they can't do a little pump, then how can they do this? Um, and, I mean, obviously the range is outrageous. Is that truck definitely the one that's the efforts then? No, they have not said for sure, but I, well, I, can't I do anything with them then. But, but uh, if, if it didn't, and, and we sold the truck out, like we certainly yeah. would have. We'd do something. We'd, like, yeah. we'd, get, uh, we'd get dinged more than $1,800 in the value of that truck. And Previously, the 6000 was a toss up. Is it worth 6000 I mean, yeah, we're really wondering difference. whether. Well, well, I wonder who would, I think. But, you know, every time that truck leaves the station at the moment, you come back in and you got 100 gallons of water on the floor. And, and then we just we don't don't mop it out at the moment until we get this quote, and that's a lot better quote. That's more edible. Maybe you can recover some of it in your selling it to recoup what you're paying for it to. That's what we were hoping is somehow during the trading of this or whatever ends up with the truck that you got to have Stafford, uh, Stafford's the newest truck, uh, newest truck has the same problem. Their newest truck, the city of Stafford, and, and uh, this gentleman went over and took a look at theirs too and gave them an estimate also. And I haven't heard from Jerry, but I assume, that, well, they kind of don't have no choice either. It's, it's their newest truck. So I'm sure they'll have to fix it also. Talking with them, the, these hail. Um, I think it's a water is maybe, or a hail pump, but it, these midship pumps, especially in small rural areas where they don't get ran a lot, they dry up. And this packing is just kind of like a, I would compare it to like a two-piece remain on an old small block, you know, and that's kind of how they go in. Even, you know, it's just age and, age and not a lot of use. The, the haze fellow that came up and talked to us, he said that uh, actually, you probably should pack them what every every two years, yeah. regardless. So and, and that, yeah, and that had, hadn't been something I'd heard before from anybody until this guy. And that and that kind of goes along the lines. It, it doesn't make sense to uh, to have additional apparatus. It, it's not free even when you have it when you own it outright. You have maintenance costs that are pretty extensive. Just a truck of that sort. It's just I don't think it makes a lot of sense. But well, it does make sense to fix it before we pawn it off. I know mean, that we go ahead and get that done from Hale. Hayes. 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 Second back. So, 900 minimum or 1800 hours maximum would be. Correct. Okay. All right, it's been moved and second. We accept this uh, quote from um, Hayes Fire. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Lisa, do you have anything? Yeah. September 17th, I'd like to invite you. September 17th. South Central District meeting, and I'm if you would do the welcome. <laughs> it's that's a great idea. I have, to, I have to. All commissioners here do the welcome. Yeah, commissioners well, always do the welcome. Commission yeah. chair. Yes. Well, if he's but not available, he'll always show up. Oh, that's I mean, How great would that look if I had representation from all three commissioners on that one? Where is it? Over here? Yeah. And that, of course, there's donuts. <laughs> Jane likes it. Coffee. Okay. Ice cream. 
I, I have, um, Is that all day? I mean, a Tuesday, but it's a Tuesday morning. Yeah, you just can do the welcome and then you can scoot yeah. on out if you want. But you're welcome to stay, too. Our business meeting mm -hmm. and everything. But, um, okay, these, these tracks that we're trying to get people to um, file their deeds, I got a hold of. Brian Williamson, Danny Duncan, Justin Bosberg. I left messages with them. And but okay, Jerry Condre. Who knows him? I know of him, but I don't know. I thought you knew it. Is he from Pratt? Yeah. He Is lived in Pratt, but I don't know if he still lives in Pratt. Okay. I don't think so. He lives um eight and my first started. He was what? He used to be the old Department of Ag inspector okay. when I first That's started. Inspector. He lives about two blocks straight north of the Lemons Park entrance. Oh. So he does live in Pratt. He did. Because I was his one block away neighbor. He's got a glory. Okay, I'll try to find an address. I thought I could give this to you. <laughs> no, no, I didn't think that easy. <laughs> okay, and then who knows um, that Jack Wagner, is he deceased at Wendy's I've heard, I heard he's deceased, and I called to see if there's an estate, and there was not yet an estate. So we don't know who well, his heir personal there. representative is. And, and uh, I did get the Sandoval's to file there. Yeah, yeah, I've seen I, that. Yeah, I got them to do it. And I, I think Rob his. Burrow is he's looking, looking for, for his deed. He would file his. <laughs> and, and I'll just give it a, a, another one. That'd be easier. Yeah. That'd be nice. Okay. No. All right. So, Jerry Condre, and I'll try to get a letter to them then, or get a hold of them. And then that Jack Wagner, I guess that's just kind of dead water till. You know, again, uh, I'm assuming he has somebody who's going to do something of the nature of a probate case. I mean, the guy owned property. Do you have an address for him? I. I probably do downstairs. Okay. I might get that at least in the letter, maybe if somebody's getting his mail. Okay. All right. I think I think that's um I would like to call for an executive session for ten minutes. Okay. For what? Non electric oh, person. I make a motion we got an executive session with Lisa for ten minutes for a non electric person. Yeah. Ten minutes, what do you say? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome to stay, Joe. Oh, okay. I don't care. Oh, yeah. Put on the one. Yeah. yeah. Everybody in the present on. here? Okay. Second. All right. It's been moved and second. We go into executive session for 10 minutes for non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 I make a motion. We go into executive session with everybody present. Nick Lawford for 15 minutes. For non elected personnel. Second. It's been a saying we're going to executive session for 15 minutes to discuss non-elected personnel. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Discuss non-elected personnel. I second that. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Yeah, we're back here. What do you want to do? I make a motion to terminate Steve Betty from EMS director and appoint him to move Dick to his, his position. until next week. Right, we'll table the motion until next week. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Carolyn? 
renter occupied, and here it's 21%. So, you know, one interpretation of that might be that rental housing isn't readily available. So people either go somewhere else or they find themselves more forced into a purchase situation than they might otherwise choose to do in another environment. Um, so of the 413 renter occupied properties, um, a lot of them weren't really, you know, they've fallen into rental over time. They weren't designed as rental properties, but we do have um, uh, some that were. Most of those are retirement units. We have some HUD housing units, and um, there are 35 units countywide that are in duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes. Some of those are uninhabited, actually, but there are 35 that were designed for that. Um, the most recent duplex construction, um, or you know, when I look at that, I, I interpret that as the non um, retirement, non HUD rental housing. The most recent construction was in 1956. Um, the rental vacancy rate, um, so unoccupied property available, it, you know, that one comes somewhat from um, public census numbers. I don't know exactly how totally accurate that is, but our estimate is 5.5% compared to 8.4% statewide. Um, according to the census, our average rent rate is $288. And that's a lot of what is the challenge of getting new housing mm -hmm. developed. We have, we just, we haven't established that uh, an investor can get a reasonable return on their investment in an open open market. That so it's kind of a challenge. Low. It does yeah. seem low. Um, um, our median household income for Stafford County is 42,000. And the you know, governmental definition of what affordable housing is, is that less than 30% of your household income is on your housing. So that extrapolates to 875 a month, which is a lot in this market. We understand that that's probably also an indication too of kind of the cultural bent that we have that we expect our housing costs to kind of be low in this environment, but nonetheless, um, yeah, fif currently 50% of our population spends less than 15% of their household income on housing. What we find is the greatest void is housing targeted for professionals and young families. There just are a lot fewer <laughs> options to offer that segment. We have, we have retirement housing. Um, we're not showing a real um, tight need in that area. We do have some low-income housing, but our, our, our challenge is when you know someone like Sydney comes to town, what options does that young professional have, or or, or with a young family? We have mm -hmm. I have anecdotes galore, but you know every time the school hires an administrator with a family, there's in any of any three of the districts it's always the scramble of where's that person going to live right now um you know just today i had the report that there are two teachers in stafford that have been hired that are still looking for a place to go it's it's that workforce middle income strata um you know i, I had submitted an application last year to the moderate income housing program and uh stated that in some ways, you know, you know there's, there's statistics, but sometimes the anecdotes tell the story as well as any, and they used one. I've, I've read it in newspapers around the state. They keep using it as an example. I think, why didn't you just fund our application? Nonetheless, it was the one that um, related that when uh, Stafford hired an administrator some years ago, um, the person was looking for um, basic rental housing, still owned a house in another, another um, town ended up renting from the independent living units of the local nursing home. <laughs> because that's where you can find an apartment. So um, that's where we find, I think, that our our crunch is in, in Stafford County. So you know, if, if we're going to accomplish our purpose of growing our population and our tax base, there's got to be an element of housing that goes along with that. When we um, established our 501c3, we um, made the, the case that housing is a, a needed part of economic development. 
and um, our 501c3 um, letter of determination has approved that as an eligible activity and it's not limited oftentimes um, housing is a charitable 501c3 activity because of the indigent population that that charity serves in our case um, we are charitable by our nature of all of the indicators of economic decline that have occurred over the last couple of generations. So economic development is a charitable activity, but in addition to that, increasing residential inventory is a, an eligible charitable activity, and it's not limited to low to moderate income housing. It's limit, it is a part of what is necessary in economic development context. So, um, we were actually awarded this month um, a community service tax credit allotment from the state of Kansas. And um, that is something we wouldn't have been able to, you know, looking back to the idea that the commission agreed to um, establishing a 501c3 separate from the county because it would open up a wider range of funding um, opportunities. There's an example that we would not have been able to get that had we not been a C3. And um, the idea that housing was was defined in that way was also something that led to the ability to get that particular award. So there's one example where it's kind of worthwhile. Um, we uh, received a $150,000 tax credit allocation, which will actually generate over $212,000 of cash contributions that we'll use for housing development. Um, Digression, but so um, some accomplishments, I guess, so far. What we've already what we've already done is, um, in the tax sale, as you probably all already know, in, in um, November last year we acquired a lot in Maxville, and in the meantime, the city of Stafford has also donated two lots. Um, we have a countywide committee that's considered design options and and, and have chosen a full floor plan, and now that we have. Um, the grant from the state of Kansas, um, in addition to some of the funds we have within our own operating budget that we've been accumulating for the last two and a half years, we feel like we have enough to for sure build one and hopefully complete two without any kind of debt financing. But we want to address it throughout the county in, in all towns, and so we're still looking at those opportunities to, to continue to um, get funding, and one of those good opportunities is the Moderate Income Housing Program through the Kansas Housing Resources Corporation. So, um, what we hope to do is to apply for that program. Um, that deadline is in September, early September 6th, and it will require collaboration with the county because um, in this case, the county is the eligible applicant. Actually, um, the nonprofit can collaborate, but we're not eligible as the, the applicant. So it will require, you know, collaboration with, with Stafford County, and, and um, while I can put together all of the, the application, I can carry out the activities that are needed um, in implementing it. The county's the one that's really going to receive mm -hmm. money. Um, this would allow us to build in all parts of Stafford County, and um, our plans are for uh, a duplex where each unit has three bedrooms, two baths, and, and a partial basement. So, um, you know, why we're doing this, it's addressing a fundamental issue. I mean, we were even at um, uh, our regional leadership program, um, which is started um, at our second session and yesterday's session we talked about uh, you know part of one of the activities was that people were thinking about what is it you can, what concerns you most when you think about your community and housing always comes up as one of those fundamental challenges in rural areas and we're no we're no different we're we're attempting to uh, address one of those fundamental barriers and challenges to developing um, our counties um, it doesn't really cost the county anything, no budgeting required. Um, would uh, obligate probably some of 
<laughs> we didn't lose this time, but it wouldn't require any new <laughs> <laughs> any new budgeting or any new contribution of cash, um, other than you know we'll, we'll be considering what we will document the um, contribution that Stafford County provides economic development and you know the regular operating um, funds, but. Um, you wouldn't have responsibility for ownership and management. It would primarily be carrying out a, a specific activity, specific funded mm -hmm. grant activity, and um, economic development owns the land and would continue to then own and improve the property once the project is over. And so the long-term benefits, tax base, utility sales, all the things that go along with an improved, I mean, a, a larger population. Um, a lot of what drives us the need to maintain school enrollment and business base and just make it part of that. So do you have any questions? So when you anticipate start of construction? Well uh, we uh, I go through a training for the community service tax credit at the end of August. So we won't, um, you know, come out with the idea of tax credits being available before then. Um, what we discussed today in our board meeting was um, the approach that gives as many people or as are interested the opportunity to contribute. You never know. You never know. Are they going to? Are those credits going to sell quickly? Or are you going to struggle to get them sold? So what? Um, the approach is going to be is that we're going to solicit letters of intent for those that are interested, and by October 1, we'll then, then have an indication of how many citizens are interested in making those contributions, and we can evaluate whether we either need to ration them, proportion, you know, mm -hmm. pro rata type of thing, or if that's even an issue. We don't, we don't know how many people are gonna choose to contribute. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we'll hopefully, you know, start collecting funds mid-October. And we have, right now, you know, we, we have some funds in our operating budget. We could probably go ahead and start start getting things going. We did kind of hold back a little bit. At one point, I had two smaller applications that didn't get approved. And I don't think it was the first preference of the board to um, consider financing to get it going. So we kind of held back a little bit. Now we know we've got enough for sure to build one. Probably two, and we're here. So, um, whether today or maybe I come back next week, but um, I will need to understand for sure that the county is willing to make that application. I will put that together by. Do you need the resolution? resolution? I will need. Yeah. Um, yes. is in order and we're doing the, the, the legwork on that but ultimately mm -hmm. once it's constructed though we're not tied to operate it right so we're just a facilitator that yes. runs basically what resolution it'd numbers? be 14 2013-14 I make a motion to adopt resolution 2013-14 been moved and second. We adopt resolution 2013-14. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried.
Okay, so we'll have to recess at 10.30. Mm -hmm. For your public hearing. For the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Which is, it is 10.30. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Recess.